Hi, I'm Brittany. I'm Joe. Uh, and we've lived in this van here behind us for the last two and a half years. Uh, Kristen from the Wayward Home asked us to, you know, be speakers for her summit. Um, and our topic today is going to be all about van life with kids. Our daughter Max was three and a half years old when we decided to hit the road. She's almost six now, which is hard to believe. <laughs> and living into the van at this point is almost all she knows. And so a lot of people ask, you know, what does your daughter think about living in the van? Well, she doesn't really know anything else at this point. And she really loves it. So that's what we, we love sharing with people. And I think that, you know, if our story and like, you know, what we talk about today could encourage even just one family, uh, you know, to pursue their dreams of full-time travel, um, our time here today will be well spent. Uh, Kristen was nice enough to send me a whole list of questions of stuff that people might be interested in. Um, so we're just going to go through the list and answer some of these questions. Uh, so the first question is, how did the idea of van life come up for your family and what first sparked the idea? Well, you want to talk about that? Great. So I know that we had kind of joked back and forth for years about the idea of, you know, traveling on maternity leave or going to Europe and renting a van or renting a van here. And in fact, several years ago, maybe seven, eight years ago now, for my birthday, you planned a total surprise trip mm -hmm. and we rented an old 81 van again and we hit the road and we went camping and we made it about an hour and a half before before it broke down <laughs> which was probably the most honest introduction to van life we could have had if, if we're being story. truthful yeah. um but you know i remember um a day at work so our daughter was three and a half and she was in daycare 12 15 hours a week and Brittany and i worked opposite schedules um basically so we didn't have to pay for too much childcare because it's extraordinarily expensive in the Seattle area. And, <clears throat> you know, I married Brittany because she's really cool, she's really fun, and I got to see her every other Friday. And we were both too tired to do anything fun. And, you know, that's not really why we got married. I still remember my daughter Max's first full sentence to me. She was probably two and a half years old. I asked her to do something and she said, say that to my face. And I'm like, whew whoa girl slow it down you know i'm your dad i'm not sure we learned that but um i obviously need to be more a part of your life than i have been and so you know anyway i remember one day at work it was uh, a rainy day because it's seattle um Brittany called me and it was the first time that we had talked and we were texters you know but she called um it was the first time that we had spoken in you know a couple few weeks um just because we didn't really communicate over the phone or in person and um, she said, hey, what do you think about quitting our jobs, buying a van, and touring the country? And I said, no, what are you, crazy? I got stuff to do. I'm in the middle of something right now. I got projects, you know, like, no, 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 no. And um, two weeks later, the next time I talked to her, I, I thought about it for, for the full two weeks, and I felt horrible for shooting her down because it wasn't a, a bad idea. It's just, it's just not it what just I wanted to crazy. hear. It just seemed crazy. Yeah. Yeah, look who does that. And so I call her from the car at a lunch break, and I'm like, do you remember that thing you asked me two weeks ago? I'm so sorry I didn't hear you out. Can you tell me more about it? And by the end of that phone call, you know, I was like, boom, all right, I'm sold. Um, we're going to do it. And, I, and do you remember what you said? Uh, what? I'll believe it when you quit your job. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm quitting my job Monday. Yeah. And uh, what happened Monday? Uh, we found a van in Boise. You flew to Boise and drive, drove it back. Yeah, I quit on Monday mm -hmm. and they still paid me for two weeks <laughs> sales. And uh, yeah, Tuesday flew to Boise and drove the van home on the same day. And Wednesday, we were building it. And um, it sounds like we kind of jumped into it when we told the story. A little bit. <laughs> I mean, for me though, and I think for you too, if you talk about like our history before we became a family. I mean, I think that we were kind of always meant to be nomadic. I mean, I grew up in Alaska, um, although I lived in the same town, you know, all growing up. Um, when I moved to like the big city, I moved around all the time. Every year I was changing apartments. I was doing seasonal work. Um, you know, since we've been together, we've lived in like 10 different apartments, condos, mm -hmm. not to mention almost moving every single day. <laughs> For the last two and a half years, I'm, I always think that it's hard for us to kind of stay in one space, even like being in Seattle is the longest we've ever been anywhere. 
Um, and even there, we moved four different times. So I feel like for us, for me at least, it's kind of just part of who I am as a person. Um, and, you know, I think that wanting to spend time with our daughter, you know, I was working night shift, so I'd work night shift and then I'd come home and I'd have to sleep during, you know, the hours that she's awake. I got a couple hours in in the evening uh, before she had to go to bed and then I had to go back to work. Um, I also work like a really emotionally kind of draining and taxing job. I work in acute mental health care um, and I've done that for over 10 years and this is even pre-pandemic. I mean, I was burnt the fuck out. Like it was really very challenging to, to go to work, to be present for my patients, for my coworkers, and to come home and try to be a present parent and a present spouse as well. Um, I think for me, that was like a really big catalyst and just being like, let's do it. You know, let's just go for it and see what happens. I know some of the biggest fears that I had were more based, and, and we talked about this, it had more to do with what the perception was. Like, is someone, are the police coming to take our kid away because we live in a van? Like, that was an honest to God fear that we had had, um, not knowing enough about the world. And um, that was probably our biggest fear. Like, you know, in terms of like the logistics of having a kid in the van and setting her up, like, we were set there. And in terms of spending that amount of time um, with our daughter, um, it, it was really, really great. One thing I'll say is, you know, you get 100%, each each parent gets 100% of her. You know, you don't get 50 and then 50 when you hand her off halfway through the day because we're both there. Even if Brittany's dealing with Max during, you know, a, a, a freak out or a spaz out, um, I'm still less than 15 feet away, full earshot. And even though I'm not the one speaking, I'm still feeling the full force and the full emotional effect of that. And then vice versa too. So, you know, when I'm working with Max, um, you know, Brittany has to hear that. And then half the time she feels like she probably has to work with me too. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Um, I think for me, the fear, the biggest fear is just kind of um, a lot of what ifs. Like, what if we fail? What if we spent all this time and money and quit our jobs? Like, what if we don't like it? We, you know, the longest van trip we had ever taken prior to this was, I mean, for me, five days. Um, and it was with my girlfriend, not with my kid, not with my spouse. Um, and so I had a lot of questions, just like what the future held for us. Also, I mean, as Joe said, you know, like, what are people going to think about us? You know, if we get knocked in the middle of the night and they know what kids in here, like what's going to happen? Um, we've only had that happen one time, two times now. Um, and they were all really nice. And because we had our daughter with us, they let us stay the night, even though we weren't supposed to. Um, but I mean, and then we've been just like generalized fear, probably me more so than Joe. And, you know, especially we have our daughter with us. We, we try to stay really safe places. You know, we do a lot of research and spend a lot of time, um, you know, reading reviews on iOverlander, um, driving places and like really checking it out before we decide to like post up for the night. But we have stayed places that are less than ideal. I mean, we've stayed at truck stops that you know, are kind of shady, um, and just like generalized fear, like, you know, are we making a, a safe decision for us and for our daughter? Um, you know, those kind of feelings come up all the time. Um, but, we've also been to Mexico with our daughter um, in our van, and people thought we were absolutely crazy. You guys are going to get <laughs> robbed, murdered, killed. Kidnapped. <laughs> Kidnapped. Your kid's going to be sold into, you know, human trafficking, which are all very real possibilities in the world that we live in unfortunately um but there was before the first we've been three times now um down to Baja and before the first time there was a lot of fear just it kind of implanted in us from other people like you know uh, once again the what if like what if something bad happened like what could possibly happen um there, we also learned there's so many people that talk and have an opinion about something where they really don't know but I have a feeling Mexico will come up again because we know that Kristen loves Mexico. I think she's there right now. I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next question, though, was um, what did you do about your housing job stuff um, when you planned your journey? So we kind of already talked about that a little bit. But in, in full disclosure, we owned a condo in Seattle. Um, you know, if you know anything about the Seattle real estate market, you'll know that it is insane. I mean, 
home sell for so much money. Uh, we, you know, we were very privileged to buy at a time where we were able to afford something mm -hmm. uh, and we were able to sell it at a profit. So that is kind of what's been funding our travels for the last two and a half years. Um, and so we had gotten rid of our home and we sold it. Uh, we stayed where we are right now at my best friend's house um, in Washington. <laughs> and there's, they've been so kind and so supportive of our dreams. Um, so that's where we're, we built our van in their driveway, currently staying in their backyard. <laughs> um, like I said, you know, we quit our jobs. I was under the impression after a year, because um, that's our plan. Our plan was to go for one year. Um, it somehow turned into two and a half years, but... My job, I like I said, I work in acute mental health care. Um, I previously had worked in an emergency department. There's always going to need be a need for my job, um, so I knew that it would be easy to, you know, return to work. So for me, quitting my job, I was like, all right, well, I'll see you in a year. I guess not. My job is still open. <laughs> um, but also, like I said, you know, so we sold our place. Um, all, all of our stuff that was in it, we really did downsize. We do have a storage unit here that we pay for. So we have a. We have a 2013 Mercedes Sprinter. Uh, it's the long wheelbase. It's not the extended model. Uh, we just couldn't find one, but uh, we chose it because I I really like diesels. I like the fuel economy. We get 20, 21 miles per gallon pretty consistently. Um, I've worked on diesels throughout most of my life, and so um, the big stuff I can generally hop in and take care of. It's not as wide as some of the other vans, but it is longer, and so that's that's ultimately probably why we chose it. I'm also six. It has foot the two. most square footage on the inside, I do believe. I'm also six foot I'm two, sure. and with the floor and a ceiling finish, I can still stand up all the way with shoes on. Some of the modifications <clears throat> that we have in our van. Um, Initially, we had a captain's chair, but we did a remodel kind of last summer. So we have built out a chair for her car seat to go on. Um, it has two eye bolts that are bolted through the floor of the van into the actual frame. Um, and the seat belt is attached to that. So, you know, our van came as a cargo van, totally empty. So we did have to, you know, configure a safe setup. Um, yeah. Lots of people do different things based on their own safety and comfort level this kind of works for us um another kind of setup that we have so she, we really wanted her to have her own space um so in our remodel last year you know we built a little toy cabinet under her seat um you know she has huge it's pretty big it's, yeah it takes up her whole scene um she has her own clothes cabinet she has another toy cabinet and like some school stuff so she really has like her own little corner and um, we wanted to dedicate some space just for her we actually turned that into like also a dinette and a bed for her but she has never slept in it because uh, she sleeps with us <laughs> um we also and you know initially when we built our van we do have an like I said, well, hopefully we'll include some pictures or a little video clip of this. We have our, our large static bed, um, but we also have this sofa bed that is a large bench and it pulls out and historically that has been her bed. So the question is, what is your, what does your day-to-day -day life look like? So right now our day-to-day -day life is a little bit different, but typically for us on the road, I mean... Sleep in, wake always. up. Always. Uh, start with coffee. coffee and tea yeah and we've got the coffee cone so it takes 35 minutes to make mm -hmm. everyone coffee and tea and we kind of like that it's a, little, a um, routine it's a routine and the routine for us we found is very very important mm -hmm. um, I don't love coffee but just part of that routine <laughs> is really really nice is doing that uh, mm -hmm. it also gets both of us upright and out of bed and gets our day rolling and starting mm -hmm. and then depending on where we're at uh, my favorite thing to do is when we first open the sliding door every day because I mean, we spend th at least three months every year out of the last about three years now on the beach. And so you open the sliding door and it's already warm, it's hot, and you've got waves, you know, 25, well, hopefully not 25, hopefully a little bit further than 25 feet from the van. And you're just on the beach. If we're feeling really ambitious, we did some preschool with her on the road this last year. So we, you know, we just buy workbooks on Amazon, handwriting, basic math, phonics, um, and, you know, try to do 20, 30 minutes of schoolwork with her. Um, and then we try to get outside. Uh, we, you know, as a family, typically do at least a 30 minute walk every single day, uh, oftentimes much longer. Yeah. But we definitely, especially with our daughter, encourage a lot of out time play people say 
oh, I could never live in a van. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't live in the van either. We sleep in the van, we cook in the van, but we can drive to wherever the weather's good enough to live outside of the van. And we spend 10, 12 plus hours almost every day outside of the van. We throw out the chairs, the rug, the table, and you know the Bluetooth speaker, and we go for walks, hikes, you know, we'll, uh, we'll walk Our daughter around is really, town for an hour. really creative. Yeah. Um, anything is a, a toy, garbage, sticks. Uh, she loves making potions. Her best toys were all found on the beach. Some other we found a dropped. robot on the beach in San Diego. She still has it. His name's Glenn. Glenn, yep. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we really encourage a lot of creativity in outdoor spaces with her, um, whether that is, you know, stopping and picking flowers to make a potion or mixing. She loves potions. She's a little witchy. Um, <clears throat> or, you know, stick fights. She's really into, like, Minecraft. And we talked about, like, building things out of rocks. Um, just trying to, you know, engage with her. But she also is a kid that lives in a van and an only child. Um, so she's pretty good at entertaining herself a lot of the time, too. Uh, nighttime for us, though, it's pretty typical. We, you know, try not to be on our phones or... Max is a tablet, um, you know, all the time. But at nighttime, it's all of our time to like be by ourselves. You know, we can scroll on social media. We can I have plan, a lot of books. plan our day. We have a lot of books on our phone too. We do. We read. So we read a lot. <laughs> um, and and Max can watch. You know, kids YouTube. She can watch. She's been watching Sonic the Hedgehog a lot. She can play Minecraft. We have a lot of games like that on her tablet. And so our evenings typically are like that. And then <laughs> lights out. The next question is, you know, how do you meet other children for your kids to play with? And how important is it um, in deciding where to go? Super important. Um, and if we're honest, we this is maybe our largest room that we can improve. Our, our largest category that we can improve in. As parents. Um, as, as parents, yeah. Mm -hmm. Brittany's been really great at meeting other families, probably like you guys watching this video right now on Instagram, uh, and um, connecting and setting plans mm -hmm. uh, and meeting up with people. And so we've met several other uh, full-time or even part-time traveling families uh, like ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they've had kids similar ages, and, you know, we go and we play. And, we and their the kids, kids are play. just as weird as ours, so it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's also really hard because we're... I mean, I know some people, especially at least what I, what I do see on Instagram, people who live in like RVs, um, travel a little bit slower than our pace. You know, our goal for the first year was to hit all over 48 states, which we did. But that meant we were moving every day, every other day. Yeah, oh. five, five to six days a week mm -hmm. we were in a new spot. Yeah, so if, you know, she went somewhere and met someone, cool, great, she had someone to play with for a little bit, but... The relationship never really developed as like a one-time play date because we just were, we left and we were gone. Um, a part of the reason that we are back here in Washington because, you know, we get to be around our friends who also have kids, who she calls her sisters, um, which is really, really important for her. And they're we, we are able to recognize that. Yeah. yeah, and that's why we're back here. What places have you visited and where do you want to go in the future? Great, I can uh, cover that. So mm -hmm. we've been to, in the last two and a half years, we've been to 49 states. We flew to Alaska, drove to the other lower 48, mm -hmm. and um, we went to Mexico four different times. Um, we drove to Baja three of the times, and we flew to Playa del Carmen once from, uh, from Detroit. Our favorite, or at least the places that we fell in love with the most with the van, is probably the Southwest, Arizona and Utah. Easy and, living. And also Baja. I mean, Baja, we were living well for less than 200 bucks a week yeah. with rent with rent it's free but you know we really liked the style of life down there too and um you know we love the beach and we love the desert so very it's slow place. pace yeah baja's got everything um i would say you know of all the places we've been baja's definitely my favorite um where are we gonna go next babe uh, i don't i don't know we really want to go to europe next yeah we have no idea how or when <laughs> We, we have, know we know how just a matter of when. We have a joke that we're going to get pregnant and go after the baby's born while we're on maternity leave for a few months in Europe. But. I mean, let me know when that baby's due. <laughs> um, yeah, but our, we would love to go to Europe. I mean, family life Europe sounds so dope. Um, also, you know, I'd love to. I've been to Southeast Asia. I'd love to take my family there. It's 
just so beautiful and amusing. What is the hardest part about van life with kids? I think I mentioned it earlier when I said, you know, we each get 100% of our daughter, and that's great when she's having a great day, um, but when she's having a rough patch uh, or a rough day, uh, we both receive 100% of it. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the It parent, can be hard to get a break. Another big challenge is finding time just for the two of us. So our daughter tends to go to bed when we go to bed and wake up when we wake up, and, you know, we don't get time just to sit around and be quiet and just talk about you know, things that are important to us without being interrupted or overheard or um, you know having having something to tend to so yeah I would say like the hardest part is really just getting a break like I said I am pretty introverted I do need um alone time to just to be able to like mentally and physically recharge thankfully Joe likes to have we call them like daddy daughter dates and he'll take max out for a few hours he'll go to the movies he'll go out to eat he'll go do something so i do have a little bit of alone time um but just yeah just getting that break it's like not fair to ask people to leave their home so you can be by yourself <laughs> it's not like they can go in another room so they have to like physically leave um so yeah just getting even a little bit of separation probably is the most challenging part about living in a van with kids the next question is going to be, what are your enjoyments, your biggest enjoyments? I really enjoy being such a big part of Max's life, especially in these really formative years. Um, I mean, we as parents have been her, not her primary influence. I would say almost her only influence for the past two and a half years. For better or worse. For better or worse. And having that opportunity, I think, is unique. But, um, you know, also, like, we know who's raising our kid. We know what their values are. And, you know, for the most part, we, we agree on a parenting philosophy that it takes, you know, our two different parenting styles to raise her. And so as long as we're on the same page with, you know, certain things and, and the, the greater, I don't know, the greater, you know, the greater stuff, um, you know, we're, we allow ourselves and each other room to parent how we're going to parent. Mm -hmm. and, I, I think that that's really important but you know if we were working opposite schedules and kind of taking turns raising her we wouldn't be able to experience that I've learned a lot from Brittany and her parenting style and I, I a lot of it I've been able to adopt and a lot of it isn't for me because of what I said like I believe that she needs two different styles of parenting um, but you know just having the opportunity has been huge so I would say my biggest enjoyment about you know living in a van and specifically living in a van with my spouse and my daughter is just getting to ex I mean she's had so much life experience at five years old more than some people will ever more than most people will ever have in their entire lives um and it's not like a humble brag but like toot toot um <laughs> But just being able to, like, experience places with her, like, going to, I don't know. What's the part? Going to Zion with her and, like, hiking Watchmen and knowing that, she, you know, she can hike six miles. No fucking problem. She's a beast. And, like, just knowing that she's, like, capable and seeing these beautiful, amazing places. Um, she's been able to push herself on hikes mm -hmm. that have ladders and ropes and stuff that... Uh, a lot of the adults uh, got there to that hike and they're like, I'm not going to do it. And I didn't do it. <laughs> and, and, you know, Max is five years old at the time and she says, I'm going to do it. And I'm just like, I'm going to help you. Like, I'm going to be your safety net. I'm not going to do it for you. Yeah. You know, if you can't do it, then we're going to turn around. But, you know, I'll be there if you slip. Uh, it's going to hurt, but I'll probably catch you, you know. Um, but she's, um, I think in a lot of ways she's actually pushed us too uh, because we don't want to teach her to be uh, afraid we don't want to teach her to learn fear outside of like understanding actual risk when it's there. Um, and yeah, I've done a lot of stuff that I probably wouldn't have done if it weren't for her. I don't want to tell her I'm afraid, so I just do it. <laughs> it's okay to be afraid. It is. Um, like I was saying though, just like I think of like before we started our trip, before we had our daughter, before I met my husband all these places that I wanted to go and now I finally have the opportunity and to be there with my family it's just priceless it really is so thanks um the next question is how do kids do on long car drives um, and how do they stay entertained <laughs> so long car drives is funny because 
we travel in her house so it's she's just in a seat in the house and you know confined to a seat in the, uh, confined. yeah and Strapped you know into a seat. We do some screen time on longer drives, but honestly, it yeah, takes us... Yeah, two plus hours, like a two plus hours with the plans, no stops. Uh, sometimes we'll do screen time. If Google yeah. says something's going to take four hours, for some reason we get there in six. It, everything takes so long. I, I don't understand, you know? And it's, so it's just, we get lots of breaks. She gets to come out of the seat quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, for the first year, maybe she still napped several times a week and... You know, we kind that, of plan our driving yeah. around that. Yeah. Um, but then also, the first year on the road, I mean, a long day for us at that point in time was only like maybe three to four hours. You know, we really just kind of planned our days around just short travel days. Um, now, I mean, she can, I don't know what the longest, maybe like 10, eight, 10 hours? Maybe eight hours. Driving day, through like yeah. Nebraska or something like Kansas, maybe, where you're just trying to, GTFO um, <laughs> and so and she does fine you know we stop a lot we do have like we have a lot of potty breaks um, that you know she gets to come out you know we get snacks we have everything that we need so our travel days are, are pretty easy but typically pretty short too the next one is what advice would you give to other people thinking of living van life with kids oh do it figure out how to make it work for you and do it yeah that's just it's there's so many right ways and so many wrong ways but the only way that's the right way for you is the way that's going to work for you and so you've got to just figure it out and, and make it happen because the time with your family depending on, especially depending on what age there are is just really really priceless mm -hmm. but uh, I, I mean I would have done it all over again even the bad days if I know I mean knowing what I know now um, you know and, and uh, if if you keep getting stressed out at work, we might just do it all over again anyways. I've only been there three days, so <laughs> maybe. Um, I would say for me, like anyone even like thinking about it, thinking that it might be a possibility, dreaming about it, like, yeah, just fucking do it. You're never going to have all the right answers. You're never going to have everything all figured out. You know, I understand that we're so privileged that we have been able to do this without working, but there are people out there who do work remotely, who, you know, travel a lot slower, but they're still living their dreams. And we've gotten some comments online before, like, oh, I can't believe they would do that to their daughter. I can't believe they would confine her to that small space. Um, and, you know, what I have to say to those people is, one, Fuck you guys. Also, too, <laughs> hopefully I can cuss on here. Sorry, maybe we can bleep it out. Sorry, um, Kristen. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's talking about families, but it's not family friendly. Um, but also, like, I never want my daughter to feel like I didn't live my dreams because of her. You know, I'm living my dreams with my daughter, not doing what everyone says I need to do because I have a kid. Um, and I, I know lots of people in their lives are like, well, as I get older, my mom says like, oh, I never got to do that because I was at home with my kids or, you know, I had to, I had to stay home because I had kids. Like, it's, you don't need to do that. You know, your kids can live your dreams right alongside of you. And I think that we're like a good example of how that is possible. I believe in you. I believe in you guys too. I also did want to point out, there's a gradient here. I mean, we quit our jobs, built the van and hit the road, but you can you go know, on the you, weekends. You can rent a van. Mm -hmm. and there's lots of chances to do that. And you don't have to build a van out. A lot of people that stick with warmer weather, you can buy a van or rent a cargo van and go camp like that for a week or two weeks or a weekend, mm -hmm. you know, and see if it's for you. Do it in the summer when your kids are, if you don't have a passion for homeschool, like some people, like some road families do, go in the summertime when your kids are on break. Take that PTO. My gosh. <laughs> Um, so we already answered part of this question, but it says, you know, how long have you done this for and how much longer would you like to do it? Um, you know, like I said, we have been living in our van since December 2019. Yeah. So pre-pandemic. Um, so it's about two and a half years at this point. Uh, and we traveled for almost two and a half years of it. Yeah. We were somewhat stationary last summer. We came back to Seattle with the idea that we were going to settle down and you know, we lasted about two months before we got the fuck out. I mean, we were just like, yeah. nope, not ready to settle down. Let's roll, you know. And um, the thing that's kind of brought us back, I would say there's at least two things. Um, 
is um, I, I feel a strong urge to be productive and um, I wanted to come back and get to work and have something to, to work on. And um, you know, we also have kindergarten starting in the fall. So probably those two things. I would say one of us was less excited and less ready to come back than the rest. Oh, I could do it forever. I mean, I could do nothing forever. <laughs> um, but I will say I am happy to be back. You know, I'm happy to, you know, be um, in this season of our lives right now. Um, our plan for the time being is to stay in our van for at least one more year. Um, you know, we're going to be renting some land in the winter time when we, um, you know, get we're going to be established in our new jobs. Um, and our daughter's going to be in school. So our plan is to live in the van just to try to save money. I mean, at this point in time, like, the housing market in Seattle has just continued to stay crazy, like, before we left. Yeah. Um, you know, we haven't worked in six months. We don't have rental history. We couldn't even get an apartment if we wanted to. Um, so right now, that's our, our plan to hopefully, you know, stay in the van, save money. Um, and then who knows next year? We've been looking at a lot of yurts lately and yurt stuff and even places even to put yurts. It's probably more me, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I do love a good year. Um. <clears throat> so, what lessons did you learn about yourself and your family along the way? We had a great conversation. I think it was the day that we kind of got back to like Seattle. Like we're rolling through Seattle, the old stomping grounds, the old neighborhoods, and we started talking about, um, you know, when we first got together, we started dating. You know. In a lot of ways, we didn't build a solid foundation because you were in graduate school and working full time when we got working together. Working nights, yeah. And I had, I mean, I was running a company, and also, you know, running sled dogs and a bunch of other stuff. And so, we didn't spend the time together to really build that foundation. And we also didn't really know what that meant. I mean, we were in our twenties. We knew nothing in our twenties yeah. compared to what we know now. And um, well, I mean, there are ten years now. And yeah. 10 short years and Ten um, short years. and it's been great but I would say that we have a stronger foundation now in the last six or 12 months mm -hmm. than we had at any other point in our relationship and it's because we took the time and another lesson that I learned and I remember last time when we got back we talked about this um, having time for your family isn't enough just because you're not at work I realize doesn't mean that I'm giving my family the the attention that they need and the presence that they need because it's really easy not to go to work anymore and then and, and, be on your phone all day be on your phone or be on your computer drinking. or drinking or going out to eat or flying drones or making new friends or whatever mm -hmm. if the intent is to spend more time with your family then you know you have to be intentional about it even when you create the time and that's one thing that we didn't we didn't know and we learned and I would say that the last six months or so we've really been intentional um, just trying to live more intentionally in general. I'll just play off of what Joe said about the intentionality of just trying to be present for our daughter. You know, we, I'm not even going to say the word sacrifice isn't the appropriate word, but I mean, we, you know, jumped into this not knowing what was going to happen. And we, you know, intentionally decided that we wanted to be together all the time you know we intentionally decided that we were going to live a more simple life I don't know if I ever knew that we could do it I you know even buying the van building it out leaving Washington <laughs> I, I'm just like is this yeah, I'm, I'm not a, a carpenter fever dream? I'm not like, a carpenter the van took two months yeah. full time like probably eight or ten hours a day of building and then four hours on YouTube mm -hmm. but it almost like looking back on it now it's like a lot of it almost doesn't seem real. Like, it's almost like... Were we actually really gone? But it was like, I didn't know that we could do that. And, like, it's really fucking cool to look yeah. back now that yes. we've had this experience, this experience, you know, us together with our daughter, and just say, yeah, we did that, and we all did it together, and we can do really cool shit, and we can do really hard stuff too yeah, we did a lot of really um, stuff. and I think that that is my biggest takeaway from our time living in our van so the last question or depending on how we edit this um, <laughs> is what should people know about this lifestyle with or without kids it can be really really rewarding and really hard um, a lot of people 
assume that it's uh, a vacation, and it is not. But there we, are a lot of vacation we, we days. We wrongly assumed that as yeah, well. Yeah, we, we made that assumption year. too. I mean, it's it's not a vacation, mm-hmm. but it's better than it's better than working. <laughs> it really. Is. I mean, if you like it, does maybe it's not. But. but I mean, you know, we we break down a lot. I mean, our van yeah. is up to two hundred and eighty thousand miles now, which is a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the engine's fine, but everything bolted onto it keeps breaking. Um, our build is holding up better than the motor, so that's good. Um, but working on the van when it breaks, uh, figuring out a tow truck. Um, I think the thing is, like, it's not all what you see on social media. Um, yeah. That's like, you know, I had this dream. I think we probably both did that. It's like, oh, look at this person's butt cheeks, <laughs> you know, laying in their bed looking at the ocean. And you got, y'all know that picture I'm talking about. Um, you know, look at these beautiful outdoor showers, these people on yeah. picturesque scenic mountaintops. And I'm like, it's cold. It's, on the sometimes it's cold. We yeah. hiked Mount St. Helens, zero visibility at the top. Yeah. You know, we broke down in Mexico. We've broken down on the side of the Ohio turnpike. We've, you know, and but people don't like show the reality of that. Uh, one thing that I didn't even know existed until we traveled and I was, uh, I did research on Instagram quite a bit. Um, burnout is a very real thing. Mm-hmm. Travel um, fatigue. Travel for fatigue, sure. yeah. But it's it's not just travel and like moving from one place to the next all the time. It's decisions. We're, it's decisions. Mm-hmm. It's really a decision fatigue. Are we going to take this road, that road? Where are we going to live tonight? Because we don't plan out like, you know, in seven days in a week, where are we going to stay? It's not like that. It's like, well, you know, are we going to drive today or just stay here? Mm-hmm. Like, we plan not very far in advance so maybe some of that is on us but you know it is very very fatiguing and there were a couple times where it was um the fatigue can be really overwhelming and so much so that um it can really ruin the experience and take away from what you're doing and what you're seeing Mm -hmm. so we did learn that i think doing too much um can also kind of have that negative consequence of burning out you know I mean, we, we've been to, all together now, I think 46 or 47 national parks, mm-hmm. you know, which is awesome. But when you go to six national parks in one week, they're all great. But they start to blend together, and then it takes away from the overall experience sometimes. Yeah. And so, um, But we sometimes lo- we you'd be that. on a time crunch, and you, you have to be somewhere when you, typically you don't have plans. And yeah. yeah. I also would say, like, something that people should know about like this lifestyle is your problems are not location dependent you know if you struggle with mental health issues if you have a bad relationship um if you have difficulties parenting unless you do the work yourself or with your partner or you know you know do your own work those problems are going to follow you whether you're in your home, in your apartment, or in a van on the beach in Mexico. Um, And I think a lot of people maybe think that that doesn't happen for people who are lucky enough or privileged enough to be able to live this lifestyle, but that's absolutely not not the case. I mean, I know so many other van lifers who are, like, struggling with... If they're solo van lifers, maybe struggling with, like, isolation or you know struggling with anxiety about being by themselves and a lot of that isn't really shared out there i don't think or just, people just look at pictures or watch yeah. youtube videos and say, oh those people look so happy um gosh i wish i could do that so i could be happy but that's not it's not reality and i wish that you know people just talked about that more how do we find things to do with our daughter um we when we go to like bigger cities um we always you know do try to find kids specific things to do i mean just google things to do in blank city with kids or as families a lot of the times it's children's museums we've been to a lot of different children's museums um some kinds of like interactive art exhibits are great like sculpture parks um we are always googling playgrounds (laughs) you know in whatever city that we're in Um, Sometimes, you know, if we're going somewhere and we know that a town has, like, some kind of um, festival coming up. So, like, just for instance, Prescott, Arizona has a Christmas festival every year we were there. Um, We, you know, just Googled, like, what is there for kids to do there? Um, Max and I went to the library. We got 
you know, to make crafts. We got like hot chocolate. It was called like Cocos and Crafts or something like that. Um, so just really kind of gearing your searches more towards things to do with families, things to do with kids. And there's just, you know, so much out there. Probably to sum everything up, I would say um, be intentional about whatever you have going on in your life. Mm-hmm. And um, your problems are going to exist regardless of where you exist, unless you choose to work on the problems. And uh, surround yourself with people who love you. Oh, you. God. Um, my, I guess my final takeaway from, you know, all of this is just if you... <laughs> I'm a therapist, so if you dream it, you can do it. Um, I I really do believe that, you know, we all have the ability to live our dreams. And, you know, if full-time travel, part-time travel, owning a van, it doesn't have to be a fucking Mercedes Sprinter van. They're dumb. They're overpriced. Um, You know, buy a GMC. Yeah, buy a GMC Chevy Astro or something. Uh, yeah, Kristen. We're on to you, Kristen. Is that just... <laughs> Yeah, that's what she rolled in for a while. Then she bought a... Then she bought a Mercedes Sprinter. Mercedes, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, it doesn't have to be, like, the pictures that you see on the internet. Van life and, you know, uh, nomadic living can be whatever it means to you and your family. Absolutely. And, like I said, your kids should not be the reason that you're not living your dreams because if you're happy and you know being responsible um your kids are going to be happy and they're going to flourish and i believe in you you guys can do it yeah yeah our daughter's rad and uh if she wasn't playing with other kids it's it's because of her (laughs) if she wasn't playing with other kids right now i'm sure she would come out here and say how much she has really enjoyed the experience of being with us traveling um and her favorite thing about van life is hot springs mine too (laughs) <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for tuning in to our Bye, talk. Bye. Thank you so much. Hopefully we didn't bore you. Um, you know, and if you want to follow us on Instagram, we're not posting as much these days, but um, it is migratory underscore animals. It might be linked somewhere in the comments or something. So thanks so much. Take care. Yes.